In this video, we're going to compare the LG C1 versus last year's LG CX or C10 OLED, and for old times' sake, versus the LG C9 from two years ago. On top of that, from time to time, we'll show in a mastering monitor worth thirty thousand pounds for reference purposes. Keep watching. Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. On your left is the LG C1, in the middle is the LG CX, and on your right is the LG C9. This is the first time I've dealt with 3Cs since Vinny's A-Levels results, and it's been emotional. On this new black quantization pattern developed by Stacy Spears of Spears and Mansell fame, the C1 suffered from the least near black chrominance overshoot among these three OLED TVs, thanks to heavier dithering, whereas the C9 exhibited the most flashing artifacts. This trend largely carried over from test patterns to real-world content, such as this heavily compressed broadcast of Game of Thrones, with the C1 looking the most appealing with a good balance of noise suppression and shadow detail presentation. The CX or C10 appearing a bit more washed out with harsher transitions, whereas the C9 manifested the most crawling noise and flickering artifacts. Because all three televisions are retail units, I bought the C1 and C9 myself, while the CX was a loan unit from UK online retailer Box.co.uk, I decided to compare the out-of-the-box shadow detail using the most accurate picture presets, namely Filmmaker mode on the C1 and CX, and Technicolor Expert mode on the C9. The display on the floor is a 30,000 quid Sony BBM HX310 mastering monitor, with a near-black gamma response that tracks 2.4 linearly, meaning that it's the reference for how much shadow detail you should see, and how bright they should be. Out of the box, the C1 crushed the most shadow detail, followed by the C9, while the CX came closest to matching the BVM HX310. Moving on to comparing out of the box colors, again in the most accurate picture presets of Filmmaker Mode and Technicolor Expert respectively, the general palette on all three OLED TVs were not a million miles away from the Sony HX310, although you can still see the darker near black gamma on the C1 and to a lesser extent, the C9 dragging down the overall brightness or APAL however slightly. By the way, the near-black quantization pattern and Game of Thrones footage at the beginning of the video, as well as everything from now on, were filmed with all the televisions painstakingly calibrated for a level playing field, allowing SDR or standard dynamic range colors on the C1, CX, and C9 to visually match the £30,000 mastering monitor after calibration using Kalman's new Aurora 3D LUT engine. With true motion disabled, all three OLED televisions presented slow panning shots in 24 frames per second movies correctly without telecynic judder. If you cannot tolerate the mouse stutter inherent in 24p films, the new cinematic movement setting on the LG C1 would smooth out the stutter while introducing less Sopra effect or SOE and interpolation artifacts than the cinema clear and clear settings on the CX and C9 respectively. Certain quarters have claimed that motion interpolation on the C1 isn't better than what's already available on the CX, but if we put out our own custom altered pattern and set the judder to one on all three OLED TVs, you can see that the C1 introduced almost no interpolation artifacts, whereas the CX exhibited the most sparklies and tearing, proving that there has been some improvement in the true motion algorithm from 2020 to 2021. That said, even with the judder and the blur both set to zero, LG's true motion calculations were still prone to causing micro stutter in 50Hz broadcast programs across all three generations of OLED TVs suggesting oversensitive film versus video mode detection under the hood. For higher frame rates such as 50fps or 60fps content, the LG C1 and CX offered OLED Motion Pro 120Hz black frame insertion, which could improve motion resolution to 1080 lines or even higher without incurring significant dimming or flickering, whereas the older C9 was restricted to an on-off toggle, though some enterprising owners have managed to enable OLED Motion Pro on the C9 via some sort of root access hack, which is not for the faint of heart. Engaging OLED Motion Pro on the C1 did not crush as much shadow detail as doing so on the CX or C10, as long as the 1D LUT was not overwritten by AutoCAL. This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. With more and more people staying home these days, Netflix is continuing to cap the bitrate of certain shows, especially in Europe, 
which will cause the picture to look softer with more compression artifacts such as macro blocking, pixelation and noise in dark scenes. What if there's a way to access Netflix servers in another country where streaming bitrate is not capped? This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix in higher bit rates and better picture quality. You can also get more content that's not available in your region, perhaps the US Netflix library which contains more movie titles. For less than the price of a Big Mac per month, you can use Surfshark on as many devices as you want in your household, all at the same time. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and even instructions on how to set up the VPN on your LG or Samsung smart TV. And for a limited time only, if you use promo code HDTV Test, you'll get 83% off and 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put the link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. When displaying standard definition content, the LG C1 and CX allowed for overscan to be disabled, whereas you couldn't do so on the older C9, causing standard def material to look a bit softer because the picture on screen is more zoomed in. From a normal viewing distance, we thought the LG C1's upscaling of even grubby standard definition broadcast was possibly very slightly sharper with less noise compared to the CX, but the difference was marginal at best. On this video mode interlacing test pattern from the HQV benchmark disk, the C9 performed best at suppressing jaggies, whereas the newer C1 and CX betrayed more jagged edges on the third bouncing bar, as well as the circle. In terms of film mode interlacing, all three OLED TVs correctly detected and processed both 3.2 and 2.2 cadences in these test clips, again from the HQV benchmark disk. All three OLED televisions passed full chroma bandwidth on this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Munsil HD benchmark disk. As far as screen uniformity is concerned, there is always going to be unit-to-unit -unit variation, but perhaps more importantly over the course of the past 12 months, we see certain trends depending on whether the panel originated from LG displays Paju or Guangzhou Fab. Larger screen sizes, for example 65-inch, 77-inch or 83-inch OLED panels are more likely to be manufactured in Guangzhou, where MMG or multimodal glass technology has been implemented. To be clear, the 55-inch LG C9 and C1 retail samples used in this comparison video were equipped with Paju OLED panels, whereas the CX sample which had a manufacturing date of February 2021 carried a Guangzhou panel. All three exhibited no significant dirty screen effect or bending on full field grey slides, but only the CX would manifest faint horizontal lines or what we call the Venetian blind effect on very bright HDR elements, not only on this luminance loading test pattern from the Spears & Munsil UHD HDR benchmark disk, but also in actual content such as the opening logo of Sony Columbia Pictures. The horizontal lines were mild and faint on our CX sample, and so didn't bother us in real-world viewing, although some gamers may feel otherwise on their OLEDs due to higher incidence of panning across a bright object in HDR games. That said, the latest Guangzhou panels have their own benefits, usually presenting the cleanest near black uniformity, as the LG CX proved in this side-by-side -side comparison, even if there's still some mild vignetting along both sides of the screen. The older LG C9 fared worse here. In terms of HDR peak brightness on a 10% window, all three of our OLED samples measured within 50 nits of each other after calibration to D65 white point. Because our eyes perceive light in a logarithmic manner, not to mention a similar ABL profile across all three generations, we couldn't see any major difference in HDR brightness between the three TVs, regardless of whether the movie has been graded to 1000 nits or 4000 nits. We did spot a minor difference in native 10-bit gradation though, where the LG CX aged out the C1 and C9 by presenting smoother gradients in the skies of the Martian. However, for some reason, the smooth gradation decontouring filter was more effective on the C1 and C9, allowing them to overtake the CX, whose smooth gradation control didn't appear to have any effect, even on the high setting. Even though LG's dynamic tone mapping could retain more specular highlight detail, we normally don't engage it for critical viewing, because we found that it brightened middling scenes too much, therefore deviating from creative intent. 
but certain quarters have accused us of arriving at the wrong conclusion by pausing during our analysis rather than letting the scene play. So here, I'm going to play the 4K Blu-ray of Blade Runner 2049, which was famously graded to under 300 nits, first with dynamic tone mapping off, and you can see that all three TVs roughly matched the Sony HX310 in average picture level or APL. However, once we engaged dynamic tone mapping on all three TVs, pardon my slowness since I'm not used to using two hands to handle three things simultaneously, now the APL on all three TVs appeared visibly brighter than the HX310, which is the reason why we always turn off dynamic tone mapping on LG OLEDs in the interest of accuracy. With game mode engaged, input lag at 60fps on the LG CX and C9 measured 15 milliseconds, and lower on the C1 whose boost mode in the game optimizer menu helped reduce lag times to below 10 milliseconds. At 120fps, both the C1 and CX measured under 5 milliseconds, which is super responsive, but our C9 sample measured higher at 15 milliseconds. HGIG was well implemented across all three generations of OLED TVs, providing a hard clip at 800 nits, which prevents undesirable double tone mapping with HGIG compliant games. Because of underlying hardware problem, none of these three OLED TVs could avoid the overbrightened new black gamma and flickering in certain VRR games, although the C1 and CX offered a fine-tuned dark areas setting to mitigate these issues, while the older C9 is still awaiting a firmware update to add this feature. Outside of picture quality, the raw specs of the C9 were better according to the edit, supporting 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 bandwidth and DTS audio codec, whereas the C1 and CX were limited to 40 gigabits per second with no DTS support. We also prefer the webOS interface on the CX and C9, where the apps only occupy the bottom part of the screen, allowing you to still watch the content uninterrupted. On the C1, pressing the home button on the remote control will cover the entire screen with the webOS 6.0 homepage, which we're still trying to get used to. Another thing worth noting is that on last year's CX or C10 OLED, some UK catch-up TV apps are still missing one year on, due to a breakdown in negotiation between LG UK and Freeview Play before the set was released. On the other hand, the C1 and C9 have Freeview Play, and with it, the full suite of UK catch-up TV apps. Last but not least, the LG C1 ships with the updated Magic Remote featuring a more streamlined profile, as well as a Disney Plus hotkey not found on the older remotes for the CX and C9. Let's sum up, and I want to be very clear that all three are excellent OLED TVs with outstanding gaming capabilities, but if you already own the C9 or CX, there's little to no reason to upgrade to the C1. That's not to say there's no improvement at all from the C9 to the CX to the C1. I can see more refined picture processing from one generation to the next, resulting in less near-black chrominous overshoot and motion interpolation artifacts. If you don't already own any of these TVs though, and are deciding whether to buy the C1 or CX, my general advice is to just go for whichever is cheaper. Unless you are happy to pay a premium for the C1s, improved motion interpolation for 24p content, working smooth gradation control, more usable black frame insertion or BFI with less crushing of shadow detail, availability of all UK catch-up TV apps, and of course longer firmware support from now onwards. I'm sure some Karens among you will whine about certain things in this comparison video, like why are the TVs not level, why is the CX not using its original stand, why are the C1 and C9 angle inwards. If it's any consolation to you, all these points niggle at me too. So deep, it hurts. But let me explain each point one by one. Our CX loan unit was missing its front plate for the stand, so we had to use a third-party stand instead. Our filming studio is quite small, so to fit all three TVs into our camera frame, we had to put the left and right TVs at an angle. And because of the wide-angle lens that we used, again to capture all three TVs full screen, the CX in the middle looked taller and thinner than the other two. I've put a lot of effort in publishing the most accurate information. You wouldn't believe the amount of time I spent calibrating these three OLED TVs for a level playing field. 45 minutes to autocal one picture mode, and on each TV I have to calibrate for SDR, HDR, Game, and Dolby Vision. You do the maths. Thanks again to UK online retailer Box.co.uk for their help with this video. So if you are interested in getting a new television, 
please support this channel by considering buying from them. If you would like to watch more of our technical TV comparisons, please click here for our playlist, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.